Welcome to the Butler Beat. I'm Becca Bornhorst. And I'm Matt Schumacher. Housing at Butler is an issue that will continue to be a problem if class sizes keep increasing. Ashley Davis explains. The housing issue at Butler can be fixed by upgrading current housing, adding new dorms, or allowing more students to live off campus. With the current class sizes, there isn't enough space to accommodate all residential students. We do have um, on the um, plan to upgrade Switzer and Ross, but in order to renovate Switzer and Ross, we also need to come up with some additional housing. Uh, and as the university is exploring whether or not it wants to get a little bit larger, that will impact what we do in housing. Ross Hall was built nearly 60 years ago, and Resco is over 20 years old. The apartment village is the newest non-Greek housing, but it can't accommodate all juniors because of the large class sizes. There's no way with how big the sophomore class is right now that they can fit all of us and all of the new incoming freshmen. They definitely need to build more housing or let not make us live on campus for three years. But there is a reason juniors aren't allowed to live off campus. We have an agreement with the Butler Tarkington neighborhood that when we built the village, the agreement was we would have a three-year live-on requirement because they would only sign off on the village being built if juniors moved back on campus. Most students don't understand the reasons why Butler won't allow students to live off campus. Freshmen are supposed to live in Ross and in Schwitzer, which is fine, and Resco is supposed to be for sophomores, but if you don't get into Apartment Village, as a junior, you should be able to get a house. Like, I feel like they should give you a credit to get a house so you don't end up living in dorms again. Students are given a lottery number and asked to attend an apartment selection night where they can sit for up to a few hours until their number is called. Uh, I think the actual housing is really nice. Like, I've seen a lot of other schools, and I think we're doing pretty well for ourselves. But, like, the system is flawed, just mainly because no one knows what the lottery is. So, like, I don't know if it's credits based. I don't know if it's, like, major based. So, I think that's a problem. Stephen says University Terrace is seen as flexible and able to accommodate students of various classes when other dorms and apartments fill up. Butler has a policy that requires all students to live on campus their first three years. But with the apartment village being the only non-Greek housing option that is consistent with other college standards, it may cause future potential students to not choose Butler unless the issue is resolved. For the Butler Beat, I'm Ashley Davis. Atherton Union will undergo its second phase of renovations as soon as students head home for the summer. The $2.3 million job will add 5,000 square feet of space to the dining hall. Along with more seating and new food stations, RMR Senior Pro Project Manager Justin Flickinger says the best part will be the kitchen. The other really neat thing is, is we're really trying to get uh, all of the cooking uh, up to the customers. So you're going to see all of your food being prepared. Uh, everyone's really, really excited about the fact of you want to know what food's being prepared for you, how it's being cooked, who's handling it. You're going to see all of that now. Students who complain about the smell of Atherton will also be happy because a new ventilation system will be installed. National recognition. Butler Beats Brooke Lewis reports. The Butler University College of Business is on the rise. The school recently secured the 48th position in Bloomberg Business Week's nationwide standings for undergraduate business programs. The school is up 15 spots from two years ago and only looks to move up from here. Not, Dean uh, Chuck Williams tells us why this is so important for the college. Their parents use ratings as, a, as a, a way to screen um, colleges. And for us to be a top 50 college of business at the undergraduate level is um, it's, it's historic in terms of its accomplishment. There are many factors that play into Butler's high ranking. The school focuses on providing students with hands-on opportunities from freshman year through senior year. Some of these opportunities are Butler's freshman experience, the real business experience, and the Butler Business Accelerator. The Business Accelerator has students work with companies in the real world to take them to the next level and show students how companies work outside of the classroom. Avery Voles shares more about her experience at the BBA. During my internship, I have the opportunity to interact with professionals who are well-versed in their fields. In addition, I work with clients on a daily basis. I am creating tools and financial reporting packages. As the college's hard work is paying off. The graduates in the class of 2011 had a 99% job placement rate within six months of graduation. The seniors this year are also finding luck when it comes to the job search. Stephanie Flint tells us about her job placement. Um, the College of Business prepared me uh, very well for the entire interview um, selection process because it was it was pretty strenuous at certain points. So um, 
I know that they, they really gave me all of the tools that I needed to succeed. On top of being named a top 50 school, Butler's College of Business received many other awards. The internship program earned a number two ranking, while the overall academic quality that students in the college are receiving came in in 12th place. The MBA program is now ranked as 37th in the nation. Butler's College of Business has found its place among the top colleges in the nation and is providing award-winning education for its students. For the Butler Beat, I'm Brooke Lewis. Summer is near, which means it's time to start cramming information to prepare for finals. The Butler Beat's Ari Castle attended a unique study skill session to help you hit the books. Ricky Lawrence of the Learning Resource Center knows how important memorization skills are. Just before exam time, she hosts a memorization seminar where students can learn new tricks for studying. Nearly two dozen students attended, and by the end, nearly all of them had a new understanding of memory and a personal goal for studying. I'm going to try relaxing. I tend to stress out really bad when I study. The goal of the seminar was not just to play memory games and learn new tips, but to teach students how to develop their own skills to studying. I felt good about the participation. I really feel like students were able to take some strategies with them, and, um, and I have a sense that there will be uh, some that will go and actually apply some of the strategies that they've learned today. One of these strategies is how people absorb information. For example, you only absorb 10% of the information you read, 20% of the information you hear and 30% of the information that you can see. Having memorization skills are important. What's even more important is how they translate from in here to back there. You don't need to study by yourself in Irwin Library for these upcoming exams, as Ms. Lawrence advocates. The goal for me always is letting students know that there is a support system, that that is a powerful assistance for students in college. Ms. Lawrence plans to do one more memory seminar before exams begin. For the Butler Beat, I'm Ari Castle. Indianapolis is having an early spring and Butler Campus Farms is in full swing. Reporter Mary Algier has the story. Go down some stairs and across a bridge and you'll find yourself down on the farm. Big things are happening at Campus Farms. It started out about two-tenths of an acre of growing space and now it's almost um, nine-tenths of an acre total and probably about three-quarters of an acre of growing space. So Here at this chemical-free urban farm, produce is grown and sold to the community. You can eat them in indie restaurants or even Atherton. Campus Farms is also starting a new CSA program. We run a CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, and it's essentially like a subscription plan for vegetables um, and fruits that people pay at the beginning of the season, um, and then each week they pick up their vegetables at the farm. The farm's plants and bees should soon get a new neighbor. Chickens might be making their way to campus farms. Internally we've approved the use, you know, using getting chickens for down there. They just need to find a sponsor. So if anybody out there has $1,500 um, that you can be the sponsor of the Butler uh, chicken coop. Along with green spinach and tomatoes, Dorsey says he plans to put in flowers to encourage bees and other insects. Plants a whole lot of flowering plants around the farm this year. A lot of native perennials that flower uh, from early spring to um, late fall and even winter. Campus Farms is looking for a summer intern and volunteers are always welcome. Contact the Center for Urban Ecology for details. For the Butler Beat, I'm Mary Algier. Coming off a 2-1 victory in their first spring game in Oakland last weekend, men's soccer turns its attention to in-state rival IU, a team that they, all, that they know all too well from last fall. I attended practice to provide a preview for the upcoming game. As they prepare for IU this week, the dogs are putting a large emphasis on defending around the net, which has been an ongoing point of concern for the squad. We did let, let in a goal off a set piece, um, and that, that's one of the areas we're trying to get better at. We allowed a lot, of, a lot of goals off set pieces last year, so actually just today we came out here and all we really worked on was defending set pieces, so um, it's kind of been a big focus for us and something we're going to try to try to fix for next season. Off of set pieces defensively we need to be a lot tighter. Uh, we gave up a goal in our last game and then in the fall that was kind of a weak point for us. So just be able to come out and get all of our marks and not let any easy goals in. Freshman Zach Steinberg says that while everyone recognizes IU as a perennial soccer powerhouse, the dogs know what they have to do and believe they can hang with the Hoosiers. The key point in playing against teams like IU is just, you know, 
not adjusting to their style of play and just, you know, going at them like we would go at any other team and just playing our style game and not getting caught up in, you know, the, the, the hype that is IU. Oldham believes this game will be a great early test for the relatively young team as they continue to make strides for next fall. It's definitely going to show us where we are at, at this point in the spring. I know we have a few guys coming in the fall, but really this is our main core of players for even moving into the fall. And coming uh, from last fall, whenever they beat us right at the very end, there's definitely a bitter taste in our mouth. We want to come out and, and play our best and come away with the win. This matchup is more than just Butler versus IU. Both teams carry a significant amount of local Indiana kids on their rosters, many of whom have played either with or against each other throughout high school on their respective club teams. With that comes personal rivalry. Butler will look to even the score against the Red Army on Saturday night at 7 in Bloomington. For the Butler Beat, I'm Matt Schumacher. The successes of the men's soccer and basketball teams have placed Butler Athletics in the national spotlight. The individual efforts of the athletes to reach the collegiate level, however, are often overlooked. Butler Beat's Mallory Winters follows the story of one rising star. For most college athletes, the journey to achieve that dream starts when they are only children. After that, countless hours are spent on the track, on the practice field, or in the weight room training for that goal. For Cassie Ruppel, though, the path to collegiate athletics started after she was already a student at Butler. Cassie walked on the softball team in January, jumping right into the thick of preparation for the season. Cassie explains how she became a Bulldog. I emailed Coach Hall. I was basically asking if I could be a redshirt this year, try and walk out in the fall and basically get some practice in for the summer and for next year. And just with the timing of people leaving and people coming and that, uh, I ended up on the team, so what do you know? Joining the team in practice, Cassie missed all of the off-season work and preparation. She did not realize how needed she would be. Assistant softball coach Megan Slack explains just how important Cassie is. Uh, a great presence, um, athletic ability. Um, her bat has brought a lot to the team, especially when we were struggling there for a while. She really picked us up. Um, alpha wise I think, her speed is great, um, and she knows how to judge a ball, and I think that her personality just fits really well with the team. The lack of practice was not a problem, and Cassie has been a solid contributor for the Bulldogs, batting over 300, playing outfield, and taking some innings on the mound. She even managed to crack the starting lineup. Freshman outfielder Sarah Granowski says that Cassie has brought a welcome presence to the outfield. I think she's brought a great arm. She's got um, great skills out there, and it's so nice to have just another team member out there, you know, cheering each other on and stuff like that. From planning a redshirt season to a starting spot for the Bulldogs, this semester has been a whirlwind for Cassie. Whatever the rest of the season brings, you can believe she and the Bulldogs will be ready for anything. For the Butler Beat, I'm Mallory Winters. This Saturday, the Butler men's tennis team will recognize the career of two of its players on Senior Day. Lance Rinker caught up with the seniors to talk about leadership, friendship, and memories. Seniors Zach Irvin and Stephen McLaughlin have spent the past four years representing Butler University on the tennis court. With just three matches remaining this season, their collegiate playing days are nearing an end. Both players say they have learned more than a few lessons along the way. I think over the years I've just kind of I've kind of learned to take the ups with the downs. Um, just kind of kind of learning how to get better, overcome obstacles, things like that. It has been a growing season for the Bulldogs. Six of the team's nine players are freshmen. Not only is it the youngest team head coach Jason Susha has ever coached, but for the first time in my tenure here, so 15 years, we have a freshman playing one in Austin. While playing number one singles this season, freshman Austin Woldmo has impressed. So much so that he was named Horizon League Men's Tennis Player of the Week in March. Uh, I definitely think the seniors uh, taught us a lot, you know, with their experience. You know, they've had three years longer than us, and I know certainly I go to them for all the questions that I have, and they even have a nickname for me. They call me 20Q. 20 questions because I just can't stop asking them questions, trying to get my feel for, you know, being a freshman on this tennis team. 
Woldmo, Irvin, McLaughlin, and the rest of the Bulldogs spend countless hours traveling together on vans like the ones behind me. The seniors say those are some of the things they'll miss most. Most fond memories will probably just be the times I've spent hanging out with the guys, um, road trips, you know, the van rides especially are usually pretty fun. I mean, it's a cramped van in there and you get to, you get to bond real well, so definitely the van rides and the, and the matches. Do you have any stories uh, from those road trips or anything that like, stand out? <laughs> I don't know if I can put any of those on camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so while Irvin and McLaughlin's collegiate careers draw to a close, the two have left a solid foundation for Butler men's tennis to grow upon. They've uh, left us with uh, some good traditions to carry throughout the te team for the next couple of years. And, you know, we're, we're on a path right now that's going to lead to success hopefully next year and the years after. For the Butler Beat, I'm Lance Rinker. That's all for the Butler Beat. I'm Matt Schumacher. And I'm Becca Bornhorst.